Listen to your favorite shows live and on demand 24-7. Download the 77 WABC mobile app now. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. Dominic Carter here with you is Vice President Kamala Harris ducking scrutiny. Come on, folks. That is a rhetorical question. The answer is yes, as she has apparently earned enough votes. One may ask how that is, but enough votes to become the Democratic nominee for president, the first black woman, first Asian American to be the presidential nominee. So history in the making, we will see how it all plays out. There are so many things we need to talk about this hour. Again, Dominic Carter here with you. You can send me a comment on Twitter, on X, at Dominic TV. Understand I may use it live. You can reach me via telephone, 800-848-9222 on this Friday afternoon. Man, it is hot. It is so hot that it's hot, 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 like Beach material, like stay in air conditioning all day. Like if you don't have an air conditioner, I have no idea what you do except for to go to a cooling center wherever you may live. So we're going to follow up on this Friday with a couple of stories that we uh, talked about yesterday. How in the world Could the Olympics let that fight go forward with the biological woman and her opponent? The biological woman quit after 46 seconds. And if you listen to me, you know I have two daily live shows, 1 to 3, 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time live again from midnight to 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time again live And something we talked about last night, San Francisco is about to start a program where they will pay addicts $100 a week to stay clean. I'm sorry, folks, it's not going to work. This is KTVU Fox 2 in San Francisco. Tonight, we are hearing from drug users living in San Francisco on a new initiative that could earn them money if they stay sober. It's a new plan that the city hopes will help people stay clean and tackle San Francisco's drug crisis. KTV's Betty Yu live for us in the studio with more on this proposal and how people dealing with substance abuse feel about it. Betty? Claudine, this new legislation is called Cash Not Drugs. Tonight I spoke with people in the Tenderloin and I received mixed reviews on whether it will ultimately work in the long term. And we'll have more on from that report coming up in a little bit. But, folks, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. I don't mean to sound pessimistic, but we're going to flush this out together live on the radio. But I want to repeat, before I get to a couple of uh, tidbits that we have on this Friday, how could the Olympics let that fight go forward? Biological woman, her opponent, the biological woman, quit after 40 Six seconds. Riley Gaines, who has been uh, fighting the good fight on behalf of women and uh, and keeping sports to just women and not uh, allowing transgenders in and so on. Riley Gaines appeared on the Fox News channel. This is what she had to say. The biggest controversies of the year in the Olympics and Kamala Harris hasn't said anything and she hasn't even been asked about it. And that's a cover up. Crick- and that's and that's and crickets. that's a real shame. Crickets. All right. We're crickets gonna- from Kamala. Crickets from the women at The View. Uh, and if I could implore you, a vote for you, for Kamala is a vote against your daughter's future. Uh, I see lots of people on social media saying they will be voting for Kamala because she is a woman. Well, let me tell you, Jesse, I will be voting for Trump because I am a woman. Interesting. Some good news as it relates to law enforcement. Uh, If you're in New York, the NYPD. And thank 
God, the clapping for two NYPD sergeants shot following an armed New York City robbery. The suspect, a gang member in custody. I hope they put him under the jail. And uh, that was the release of one of the uh, officers from one of the sergeants. Two sergeants shot. Uh, This happened uh, yesterday, and it's a wonderful thing. It's a good thing that apparently they're going to be okay. I hope this suspect is put under the jail. Before we go to your telephone calls, we see, see them all coming in, and we're going to get to them momentarily. I'm, I'm sick of the gimmicks from politicians. Sick of the gimmicks. So what, what am I talking about? You may recall, you may recall many years ago, Cory Booker, the mayor of uh, Newark, New Jersey. And, uh, of course, he went on to the uh, Senate And uh, that's where he is now. And Cory Booker uh, moved into a straight gimmick, folks, moved into the housing projects. Right. Nothing but 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 a gimmick, nothing but a gimmick. So now the the latest uh, gimmick. Wes Moore, the uh, governor of uh, Maryland, right. He's in great shape and, you know, more power to him. This guy, the governor, actually put on football equipment and suited up with the Maryland Terrapins, the football team, the governor going through drills during fall camp practice. What's going on? What's going on? We're going to switch up real quick. We're going to start the defense this time. We're going to start defense. All right. Hey, defense, Tarp Jacks team ready. Hey, hey offense, Tarp Jacks team ready. Hey, hey Terrapins, Tarp Jacks team ready. Hey. Exercise. And yes, that is the governor. That is the governor of Maryland at football practice with a college team suited up and playing with them. Uh, As the kids say, I'm not hating on the governor, but let's focus. Let's do the job of representing the people, and we'll pass on all the gimmicks. Let's begin on this Friday afternoon with your telephone calls. The number to reach me, Dominic Carter, 800-848-9222. Frank, Bayville, New York, line two. Frank, what's on your mind? Dominic, a lot's on my mind. Thank you very much for taking my call. What we're seeing in the Olympics is an absolute atrocity. It's a division amongst mankind, if you will. Okay, we have biological males or people that can't pass testosterone tests fighting women, which is just absolutely repulsive. And then let's not forget, not that long ago, they did that uh, 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 that mockery of the Christian religions last supper. What's going on? Who's, who's directing these Olympics? And this is an attack against... Uh, Mankind, really. Um, what do you Agreed. Think about this? No, no, I, I agree with you, Frank. And what they did with the Last Supper in terms of uh, the, I think, the transgender, the or the, uh, the opening right. ceremony event, it, no. it's disgusting. And Trump Trump uh, spoke out on it. And we need more leaders to speak out on it. But, you know, but it's an election year and folks are pandering. So they're not going to say anything because I and hint, hint, guess which party I'm talking about. They're, yeah, they're, 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 they're out there trying to get the votes, at least no matter what That's you right. think about Trump. At least he told you what his position is. Here we hey, are. Dominic, Go ahead, Frank. Yeah. I just want to I just want to just say something for the audience to hear. Everyone thinks that this is far away in some other land. Um, my wife is a superintendent. I'm sorry, not a superintendent. She is um, uh, athletic director for a local school on Long Island. Okay. And this stuff is coming. This stuff's coming right here, Dominic. Our daughters are going to have are going to be faced with this right here at home, and to, unless if we put a stop to it. And and it's disgusting. And your wife is going to be on the front line uh, yes, of sir. of uh, having to deal with this. And I I mean I I don't know what's going on in the world, Frank. Thank you. And do me a favor, please stay cool on this uh, very very hot day. Let's go to Adam in Connecticut, line three. Good afternoon, Adam. What's hey. on your mind? Hey, how's it going, Dominic? Great to talk to you. Um, I think it's great that Trump is leaning into the um, racial discussions about um, Kamala. Um, I think it's a fantastic thing. Well, I do, too. 
to be honest with you. And let's I, let's let's keep yeah, in I mind think... let's keep in mind that he was asked the question. It's not like he sat down and just blurted that out. He was asked the question. If you ask the man a question, you know Trump's personality, you're going to get an answer and you're going to get a real answer. Unlike the Democrats, right. where you can't ask uh, Vice President Harris anything because she's not exactly. taking questions. And I think and I think um, because I think that that the more he talks about it, the more voters he's turning off. I mean, he's he's turning off, um, uh, you know, uh, suburban women. He's turning off uh, people of color. I'm biracial. Um, I, as soon as he started talking, it, it reminded me of like when I was growing up and, you know, we, we had. No, um, I, I hear I you. Adam. I so, so so you said yeah. you're biracial. So you're losing. So, OK, wait, wait, wait. So, so would you prefer he not say anything at all? He doesn't need to be talking about her, her, how she decides to campaign as a biracial person. He has no right to be talking about that, especially considering he's he's a DEI just by the fact that he has the last name Trump from his dad. He has he 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 benefited in many ways. He would often say, oh, I'm a I'm a developer in, in a developer developer conference. I know you're I know what's going on with you guys. I'm a developer. OK, it's so Adam, so Adam, for, so Adam, Adam is is uh, Kamala Harris uh, DEI hire. Who knows? I, I mean, that's listen. I'm 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 trying to answer. Okay. Okay. Um, a D, I, a D, she's she's one of the she's probably one of the most um, accomplished people. Uh, you didn't answer my question. Ever yeah, run you didn't president. answer my question. She's not accomplished. Not saying, Can you answer my question, please? She's not accomplished. Hold on. No, she's how not. Many, she's many, been, she's been elected to several offices. That's it. That doesn't make you accomplished. Office, is she office. DEI? Can you please answer the question? It's a real simple no, question. No, she's, she, she's done it on her own. So you're saying she's, she couldn't do it because she's a black woman? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying, did, state, I'm, st- I'm stating, and by the way, hey, Adam, thank you for the call. I'm about to go to Jacqueline in uh, Brooklyn, but I'm going to take a break first. What I'm saying is very clear, and let me let me state this for the record, folks. It is too hot out here. So Saturday is the only day that I'm off because I, I work Sunday nights, uh, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time until 1 a.m. back here on the uh, radio. And so it's my only day off on Saturday, but I, I come in and I will be in tomorrow morning doing a weekly segment uh, with uh, former Congressman Anthony Weiner. He's from the left. I'm from the right. And I'm just going to state this, Congressman, I don't know where you are today. I don't know what you're doing with your day, but but I, I hope that you are willing to discuss the issues in an honest, forthright way, an honest assessment. Because let me be very clear, Congressman Weiner, I am not in the mood. It is too hot. If you bring that nonsense that you do every single week, you are going to get it tomorrow afternoon, 4 to 5 p.m. And so, folks, I am telling you right now, I'm I'm on the record. I'm an open book. If Weiner, when we come in here tomorrow afternoon, he'll be on from uh, three to four uh, in New York, and I'm on w- with him from four to five. If he brings that nonsense tomorrow, attacking Trump as he often does, who knows what's going to happen? I can't predict what's going to happen because he is going to get it. We are coming right back. This is Dominic Carter. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. Coming up at about 50 minutes past the hour, must listen to radio when Curtis Lewa of the Guardian Angels will join me. Unpredictable is the understatement of the year when it comes to Curtis. You can't control him, and I have no idea, none, they're not a, what he may want to talk about. We are taking your telephone calls on this Friday afternoon, Jacqueline, line two, Brooklyn, New York. What's on your mind, Jacqueline? 
Good afternoon, Dominic. With regard to this Olympic uh, boxing situation with this man, biological man, competing against this biological woman, I think it's just uh, an ongoing example of what has been happening around the world with the continued abuse and misuse of women throughout society as a whole. And, uh, I mean, for Kamala Harris, who... Let's say she is a biological woman because many of the Democrats cannot define what a woman is, and and they placate and they play to their base, part of which is the LGBTQ plus community, which I have absolutely nothing against. But they're doing so mostly to the detriment of heterosexual, mostly white males and straight women, mostly white women. Um, they're, 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 they're doing so to their detriment. You know, white males are bad because they've oppressed everyone other than themselves. And, you know, white women are a bunch of Karens and they also uh, oppress everyone except themselves. When in reality, they are perpetuating the abuse of women. And, and I, I don't want to change your topic, but I will say Kamala Harris's one accomplishment along with the rest of her party, is giving a big portion of the population what they want, which is autonomy over their bodies. And as long as they can can continue to give people what they want, they know they're going to get their vote. Right. But you know know what really bothers me, Jacqueline? It, It should not be just what you want. It should be what's in your best interest. They don't care about that. Clearly, clearly. Clearly, clearly. It's all about pandering uh, yes. and and patting people on the head and, oh, 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 well, you know, we'll, we'll give you this. And uh, you, you say police brutality is a big problem. Oh, yes, we agree. It's a it's a horrible problem. And 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 oh, oh, you don't want district attorneys to prosecute. You don't want them to do their job. Oh, OK, well, we won't do that either. And, you know, I talked about this. I talked about this last night, Jacqueline, on Instagram. I saw one of the most disgusting videos I've ever seen in my life, in my life. And it said, women beware. And this creep, this sicko, walks up in his right hand. He has a big, uh, like, uh, carafe of coffee, so you can't see what he's doing. In his left hand, he comes up behind this woman on a Bronx 2 bus. She can't see what's going on. He literally, Jacqueline, pulls out his penis and starts aggressively masturbating right over this woman show with his penis completely out and Jacqueline this is the world that we live in unfortunately I you know I I, I suggest that people go take a look at it the, the video and thank you for the call Jacqueline it, it is I, I don't know what's happening in the world and you're making it possible for these sickos to do what sickos do. We are coming right back. Now, from New York City to the world, it's Dominic Carter. And uh, we are about to go back to the uh, telephones with your calls. I want to bring up uh, something I mentioned last night, a program uh, that they're considering in San Francisco. And so I've talked about this before, and certainly it's in my book on my life, about my grandfather uh, who, uh, for a part of his life, uh, was a heroin addict and did all the things that addicts do to their families and you folks know what I'm talking about. And he was banned from the house. I wasn't allowed to speak to him because he would steal everything that wasn't locked down. But uh, and then would even try and steal that. But but I'm proud of him because when he died, he kicked his addiction. And what I'm trying to say is that we we all fall down in life. The question is, do you get back up? And addiction is a serious, serious issue. So. In San Francisco, they are considering a program where if you stay clean and away from drugs, they will pay you $100 a week. I don't think it's going to work because if you understand addiction, it, it is it is something that 
you can't begin to imagine how much it pulls on you and in terms of a, a physical pull to actually uh, go get high, do the things that addicts do. So this is a, a continuation of the report of Fox 2 in San Francisco on the program where eligible residents will receive $100 a week to stay sober. Some of you also know that I lost my sister to a drug overdose. She was down in the streets of the Tenderloin. It was definitely very difficult to get her the help she needs. I want to make it just as easy to get treatment as it is to go out there and buy dope. Is up to $100 enough? Maybe not in the long term, but I definitely think it would be a a good short-term incentive to make some sort of an effort. Salvatore said if it's approved, he would sign up for the program. He's currently a CAP recipient who already receives more than $700 in cash assistance per month. Jonathan Broomfield said his drug habit is expensive. Well, that's why I said $100 would not do it at all. You know, not saying because I'm going to take some of the money and go buy some more drugs with it, but I just think $100, that ain't 300 will make you think about it. Yes, it, it, it will put me in the door. Would up to $100 a week incentivize you to quit? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I would. Definitely. And so uh, part of me says society doesn't have, taxpayers don't have a responsibility uh, in that regard. But then another part of me says we're going to pay one way or the other, either through crime, through health programs. But it's just not going to work. Uh, even though they'll be tested every week, uh, addicts are going to find a way. They're quite creative at getting around the system. If that means uh, getting someone else's urine, whatever it may mean. And I don't mean to be a pessimist. And I want to know what you folks think. But it's not going to work. On this issue, let's go to Linda in New Jersey. Good afternoon, Linda. What are your thoughts? Linda, are you with me? Okay, one more try. Linda, are you there? Okay, Linda's not there. Let's go to Gracie in Rockland County. So, Gracie, I see you want to talk about Trump, but do you think a program— Comment okay. about this. On the surface, it sounds good. All of these things sound good, but I don't think it's going to work. I I really do. I think it's too much, like you said, uh, of, of um, you know, a temptation to go buy drugs. People have to be really monitored. All and uh, the, the other thing is, where are we supposed to get all this money? All these programs cost too much, and that's how I feel. Now, as far as the Democrats. Yeah, the caller you had a two a two before Jacqueline. Uh, we, you ask a direct question to these Democrats; they cannot answer a direct que- question. They dance around it, and they always are one issue people, maybe two issue. Whereas we Republicans, I have about 10 things I could talk about why I am supporting Trump and did. Now, as far as Trump has to just talk about the issues like this, I did this and this and they did this and this is what happened. And the com- and they need commercials on, you know, as I said it once before, on the dummy television shows, but you know, in the, um, the commercials to explain to the people, don't you understand you are losing money when you go buy food, when you pay gas? I don't understand how, and safety. That's my spiel, Dominic. I know I sound like a broken record. That's why I haven't called in a week. But I had to call to say hello. I want you to know I'm still living. Well, are you in uh, Rockland County, New York, or are you in California now? No, 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 sweetheart. I'm home in a week and a half, and I'm catching up. But I know I like California better because you're on at 9 o'clock. Instead, and then this whole week you was through the night. Oh my goodness! Did you stay up with me? Uh, I couldn't, Dominic. <laughs> but I caught her, I, uh, I'm ashamed of myself. But uh, I, uh, I know. But I can't. I cannot lie. I cannot and, lie. And I and I appreciate that, Gracie. Thank you so much. You know that movie, uh, Miss Congeniality. Uh, what's Sandra Bullock? She plays the FBI agent. I could see Gracie in that role. I, I really could. Let's go to Steve in New Jersey. Good afternoon, Steve. What's on your mind? 
Hey, Dom. Dom, this program to pay the drug abusers, as I understand, $1,000? $100 a week. $100 a week if you stay clean. Stupid. By a, by a state that's running a deficit budget. But here, let, let's get to the heart of it. Ready? I've known a lot, far too many people who succumb to drugs. Yeah, that isn't going to help the problem. Paying them to contend, and that's all you're doing. You're paying them, and they're going to continue using drugs. You've got to get to the heart of what's bothering them that's causing them to do drugs. Until you do that, it may be mental illness. I call it demons. They're struggling with demons. Until you get to the heart of that, you're never going to get them off drugs, but paying them. Hey, that, that is never going to work, and it's stupid by a state that's already run in, uh, running, operating in the red. And you say, sir? Well, you know, Steve, I, I hear you. I really do. But so what's the alternative? What's the alternative? You got – well, you don't get – giving them access to clean needles – was never the alternative, right? You've got when they get them in these like these AA programs, they've got you know. I, I've I've talked to some of the people who who go to these meetings, like AA. We'll talk about your problem. No, you've got to get them into counseling. Here, I'm, I'm going to answer your question. What is bothering you? What what are you trying to avoid that makes you want to intoxicate your mind to the point of right, you don't right, know what's going right, on? Right, but Steve, but 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 it's also a physical thing. I've I've been in in uh, drug counseling meetings with family members that are fighting uh, addiction, drug addiction, and it, it, it's. It's physical in many cases. It's not just a matter of what's bothering you. It reaches the point where the body demands the drug. And so what do you do at I that know. point? I know you're right. I know, which means they have to be weaned off it. I know what you're saying. You can't just go cold turkey is what you're saying. They have to be in. And I'm, look, this is where we as a society have to provide a security net. All right. But the, the security net is you're going to, you say to the addict, you're going to get yourself that help. We're going to put you in a program where we slowly, we, we get to the heart of the problem. We wean you off the drug. All right. That, it's a, but just paying the money to stay off drugs, they're never going to, they're ne that's, that's a, uh, that's a quick fix for something that isn't going to work. My solution, again, get them into a drug program. If the taxpayers have to foot the bill, all right. And you help the ones who you can help. That is the ones that are open to, uh, this is my problem, and I'll, I'll, you try to deal with them to help them. Psych a lot, but better people than me help them get to the heart of their problems. And, all right, you wean them off the drug slowly. What do you think? What do you think about that? Well, I, you know... <sighs> I, I don't know, Steve. It, it's such a complicated issue. You know, when when my grandfather went through his situation, I obviously was not was a little boy. So I wasn't yeah. part of his uh, of his recovery. I, I can only tell you that it, it's very tough. And, and I honestly don't have the the complete answer. But I agree with you that this won't work. Thank you, Steve. Let's go to Robbie in the Bronx, New York Line 2. Robbie, good afternoon. What's on your mind? Dominic, good afternoon. I'm sober 35 years. You have to want to get sober. That's, yeah, that's, I have. Okay, I so wait, no Robbie. So wait, 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 wait. So, yeah. Robbie, without getting too personal, what was, yeah. the, what was the factor in your life that said, I, I've fallen in enough and I'm sick, sick and tired of being sick and tired and stopped because everybody was moving on with their life. And I was still in the same spot. Uh, but you have to want to get sober. I had family friends saying, you got to stop. You got to stop what you're doing, drinking, getting high. And I would look him in the face. Yeah, no problem. No problem. But on the moment I had a moment of clarity, I caught, I caught my reflection in the mirror one day. And I said, what are you doing until any drug addict, alcoholic hits that point? That's when it's going to happen. You, can give, you could have given me all the money in the world back then. It doesn't matter. The addiction, the physical addiction is a lot stronger than the money, you know? I, but you I, have to want to get sober. I, I hear you, Robbie. Uh, it, what was the drug, if you don't mind telling me, that, that you abused? Uh, boy, it was the 80s, so it was weed, coke, crack, but alcohol was top dog. Mm -hmm. so we started with alcohol. Mm-hmm. You see, so. what I recall, Robbie, uh, what, what I always say about my grandmother, right, that raised me, mm. she didn't have a formal education, but boy, did she have a uh, Ph.D. in terms of loving me, never gave up on me. Yeah. And so yeah. The, no, the, my grandfather, that was the addict, that was her husband, and she had to mm. put him out because he was stealing everything from the family, and it's a tough decision. Yeah. Plus, she had her daughter, my mother, with severe mental illness. And so my grandmother yeah. had to... Uh, had to uh, stand strong. But what she would say to me, and I still remember it, she would say, boy, 
Don't you ever go down this road. This is what she was saying. This is what they would say back in the day. She would say, yeah. she would say it starts with them reefers, meaning marijuana. Yeah. And then from there, boy, you go to cocaine. And from the cocaine, yeah. you're going to go to the heroin. And, they, and she would say there ain't no coming back from that because methadone, you know, that's the step to clean you up. But she felt that yeah. it, it really didn't, it really didn't help. So, so again, yeah, Robert, no, go ahead. So, so you say the no, answer. It's, it's in the, it's in the family. It was in my family. The alcoholism. Um, my aunt. We used to have to hide the perfume from her when she came over. Yes. I mean that's like yes. hardcore, you know. But that's yes. But that's listen. I am glad I am an alcoholic because I am living life to its fullest now. But again, you have to want it. You can't have somebody listen. I'm an arm's length away, like everybody else. But I choose not to until you choose not to and get help. Yeah, like I said, the money is not the motivator. You, it's inside until you come to, you know, you, once you look at yourself and realize I can't go on like this, then you'll then you'll change. Who knows? Tomorrow I might be drinking and getting high. I don't know. That's how I look. No, at it. no. I gotta think it one Wor- moment at a time. Words. No, but one, one day at a time. Have, right. But, yeah, but, that's, that's how you have to do it. You don't go around saying, oh, I'm this, I'm that. you got to take it, like you said, one day, one moment, one minute at a time. Well, we're proud of you, Robbie, and uh, keep keep doing the things that you're doing. Thank you for the call. Let's go from the Bronx of New York to Brooklyn, New York, and Scoop. Scoop, good afternoon. What's on your mind? Hey, what's up, Dominic? Uh, I agree with the last caller to some extent. I think it comes from the uh, the individual, man. You got to want it. And I think part of that is creating individuals from the ground up who recognize and understand the pitfalls, like me myself, I learned I learned the hard way, man. I grew up in a in a drug infested environment, man. I was born up to to dope fiends, to heroin addicts. My mom and my dad, and you know, my mom didn't make it. To be quite honest with you, and you know, growing up in that environment, I went through I went through a phase, man. You know, I so not to disagree with your grandma, but I'm the exception, man. You know, I've been smoking weed since I'm 12 years old. I still smoke weed. It's just under control. I'm also a healthy person, but the point is people got to be more aware at an earlier age. And I think uh, that starts with family structure, school education, and individuals who are a little stronger and a little more enlightened and aware because it's, it's a, it's a hard road, man. I, um, like I said, I got trials and tribulations in that world. And I, I overcame a lot of things. And I'm in a position right now where I'm actually a teacher. So I, I get a health and, <laughs> health and physical education, by the way, ironically. So I get to, you know, uh, help the, the younger kids learn earlier in the stage so that they don't make that, make that decision. Because honestly speaking, man, a lot of people are just not strong enough to make it out of it. And that's, that was my mom's problem. I, I hear you, Scoop. I just wish I had so much time, and I, I thank you for the call. I want to squeeze in one more call before we take a break. Curtis Lee was going to join me, and we'll get back to your calls. Joe in Brooklyn, New York. Joe, line two. Joe, we have little time. Get to your point, please. Dominic, this is the hardest call I ever had to make. And you know what the problem is? Sometimes people who are functioning drug addicts. Yes, that, yes. I've done cocaine for 40 years, but you know what? Somebody told me back then, never cook it if you like it. Never cook it. And all my friends who ever started cooking it or doing anything had it go went completely bad. No, I, I, I bad. hear you, you know, Joe. Me a check. My parents that I knew if I got caught or I did anything bad, I'd be killing them. Well, Joe, there, there's a and problem it, now it, called a problem now good. called fentanyl. Uh, and so even if you're not uh, uh, cooking it, you know, a small dose of uh, fentanyl and uh, the fentanyl uh, craze and, and we're planning your funeral. And you know that, Joe, correct? I know, Dominic. 40, never call in sick for work, never late, always, no matter what, my kids pick them up and go to school if they get the most. But for some reason, in my mind, oh, oh, so hard, that $100 a week mm-hmm. deal is so serving nothing, they will find a way around it. it it's impossible that that right. can help. And thank you, Joe. And uh, addicts, are, uh, if you don't hear anything else I say, folks, addicts are very creative, quite 
creative at finding ways around the system to get high where you won't know. If you're a woman, that means selling your body. That could mean selling your kids for uh, sexual uh, activity. If, if you're a man, it could mean sexual activity, doing anything to get a few dollars to get high. We are going to take a break on this hot, 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 hot Friday afternoon. Coming up, Curtis Sliwa of the Guardian Angels. God only knows what he's about to talk about. This is Dominic Carter. And now it's time for the Tunnel to Towers Foundation. Final thoughts. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation does amazing, remarkable work. Don't believe me, folks. Just take a look for yourselves. They are the real deal. With me on this hot, 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 hot Friday, Curtis Sliwa, how are you? Well, I'm okay, but I got to tell you, this Eric Adams, you've known him for years. Could you trust him with a bank account? I mean, the money he's spending on these personal trips for his friends in the police department that he claims, don't worry about it, no cost to the taxpayers. And now one by one, we see that foreign countries are paying for it. Example, Eddie Kaman, police commissioner, to Qatar twice, October 7th. Everybody was wondering, hey, where's Eddie Kaman, right? Because we expected a lot of unrest. We had a lot of unrest. Where's the police commissioner? Is that a conference in Qatar? And, and it's not just the commissioner. A security detail has to travel with him to protect him. Exactly. I don't know why you couldn't spot uh, Eddie Caban in a lineup there in Qatar as if he was anybody of significance. And then the one that's most troubling is this Timothy Pearson. He's already under investigation for four charges of sexual harassment. The rules are now he cannot be in a room with a female by himself. There has Wait, to be what? a monitor. Wait, are you serious? I am serious as a heart attack. Uh, the mayor has said, I ain't getting rid of Timothy Pearson. He's been by my side. You know, I trust Timothy Pearson with my life. Well, four charges of sexual harassment. So in order to keep him on the job, they have to have a male monitor accompany him anytime he's talking to a female in any part of government. And now he and Adam said that they personally paid for a fact-finding mission to Columbia. You know, to find out how the uh, the ladies of the night were doing there in uh, Bogota and Medellin and Cali. Well, guess what? He never paid the $5,000. The Colombian government picked it up for Pearson, and all of a sudden, Adams is hush, hush, mush, mush. And where is he going to be all weekend long? Out in the Hamptons fundraising, getting wine dined in pocket line. You cannot trust this guy near money. He's like a kid, you know, in the supermarket. You take him down the candy aisle. He reaches out and he takes the candy and mommy's got to put the candy back. What is wrong with this guy? And he does it boldly and brazenly like, yeah, I got it like that. Gives a very bad idea about when minorities are in power in terms of trusting them with finances. It's not true. But again, he plays to the stereotype. Look at this. Eddie Caban, police commissioner. Timothy Pearson, he won't fire him, won't let him go. And Eric Adams himself, a hot mess. Remember, who was his accountant? Some guy in the shelter that he said, hey, you know, I, I felt for the guy. That's why my tax returns have been bad. I want you to have a great weekend, folks. All it takes is $11 a month. Donate $11 a month to the Tunnel to Towers Foundation at T2T.org. T2T.org. Curtis Lewa, we will continue this on Monday.